Oh, sorry. Uh, first of all, thank you all for being here. This is certainly a, a special honor for not only myself, but for our players and certainly for, for the other two coaches here to have so many of you interested in our sports programs and our women's teams. Um, I'm Karen. I'm the women's soccer coach. We reported on August 4th. Um, we're going on our ninth day, I think it is, here today. Last night we had our first exhibition. We did lose it. Um, and as a coach, I think, you know, you want to win for to create the, the happy locker room and the harmonious team cohesion. But you certainly have to look at it when you do lose and realize that that's probably going to expedite our growth and our learning process. And it's really exposed what our weaknesses are. So as much as we don't like losing, we're going we're gonna to take the lessons that we learned from the loss and, and get better. The experience is invaluable um, for all three of our sports. Um, the ACC is the premier conference in, in all of our sports. So we're day after day, night after night, playing against nationally ranked opponents. Um, so we learn the game. We learn quickly You know how valuable it is every single second of the play. Um, and we also understand that every game we play is an opportunity you know, for, for us to get better and for us to challenge ourselves against the best teams in the country. So the first year under our belt is absolutely invaluable. Um, and, and I think this second year will also be, you know, for us, there's 16 teams in the ACC, so we haven't necessarily played everybody. Um, we have a wonderful home stand against Carolina, Duke, and Florida State. Florida State was the national champion last year. Carolina is got 17 national championships, and Duke is certainly in the top 25 as well. So we get to play against the best college teams in the country here at Lynn Stadium in front of the community, in front of the crowd. So our players have a wonderful, special opportunity that's going to present, that they'll be presented with. Biggest strength. So we played our first game last night. So I think working from the back up, we've got three very capable and competent goalkeepers. So it's making our first year new goalkeeping coach's job um, a little bit of a disaster, but in a good way, because I think we've got three very capable goalkeepers. Across the back, we've got a veteran in, in KB, Inga Katrine, who's standing here behind us. Um, who's got a full year under her belt in the ACC. So really asking her to be more of a, a vocal leader is going to be critical for us. Probably an area where we're going to have to tweak a lot of stuff is through the midfield because we lost two senior captains in Chinyelu Asher and Aaron Yenny, who were fabulous for our program. So last night we had um, Gabby Vincent, Jill Vettiri, Tina Marolt, those are all first-year freshmen for us playing in the midfield. So while we looked disorganized at times, the future is very bright because of them. And then up top, you know, for us last year, we lost Casey Whitfield to a torn Achilles heel right before the season started. And now that we have her coming back, um, she was a dancer and is a dancer. So she's, you know, light on her feet and quick with the ball and can kind of weave in and out of traffic. Although last night we didn't see much of that, I think it was a function of the system that the opponent was playing more than it was Casey's abilities. So when we can kind of free Casey and get her in behind, she's a pure finisher and she's pretty, pretty special with the ball. So um, I think those would be our strengths and weaknesses. And again, we've got another exhibition here on Sunday against Indiana University. And I think that will start to really sharpen each of those lines, the backs, the midfielders, and the front players. Yeah, so, you know, we came in on the 4th, couldn't practice then. On the 5th, 6th, 7th, we went double sessions, um, really trying to work on defending. I think for the 15 years that I've been here, the program has predicated itself on good team defending. So it's something that we'll take a look at now these next two days because we were exposed quite a bit last night in our exhibition. Um, I, the goal we gave up, I feel like we'll never give it up again. I mean, it was crazy when I went back and watched it on video, so I'm not really worried too much about that. Uh, the second, we played three 30-minute periods, so the good news was the second period we were rolling and much better. The third period we were, we were firing on all cylinders. Unfortunately, we ran out of time and didn't get ourselves the equalizer. But again, I, I, I'm a big advocate of us focusing on the process. You know, the outcome is what gives me gray hair. 
but we have to focus on the process. And, and I think watching the video, our process was far better than I thought it was in the second and third period. So um, I think we'll be fine. I know we'll be fine. I think we'll, we'll see uh, a different system against IU on Sunday, which is probably more suited for us to play against them. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that, no question. And then as we roll in to open the season, August 21st, we open the, the regular season here at Lynn with uh, Wright State. And while we'll completely be focusing on that, we've got a really special event on August 23rd. We're bringing in um, Washington to play, who's ranked 20 in the country, fantastic team. But we will be also honoring our U.S. women's national team coach in that game. So at halftime of that game, we'll, we'll have a ceremony for her on the field. And then after that, we'll do a, a clinic with her and then an autograph session with her. So we feel it's important that we um, – I know her, so I feel it's important to bring her into the city of Louisville and share her with everybody. And the goal is to sell the stadium out and have everybody – be on that emotional roller coaster that they were on all summer throughout the World Cup and thank her and, and pay tribute to the program to the U.S. women's national team um, and help cheer us on against a very good Washington team. Coach May, you had such a young team last year if not freshmen and sophomores first year transfers kind of thing still a very young team this year but how much experience did they gain from that first year in the ACC and how much talent and know-how are you yeah, uh, last year, you know, our first year kids played significant and will continue to play significantly. Right now, the, the where the seniors graduated was through the middle third of the field. And maybe I think this because I was a central midfielder, but I believe that's the pulse of your team. Um, and those are the players that really orchestrate your attack and help you stay um, locked up defensively. And those are where our first year kids are playing for us right now. So the good news is because the ACC has allowed us to get a much better player from a recruiting standpoint. Our freshmen are prepared and capable to do that. I just don't think they are seven days into preseason. So we need more time. We need to you know, be more cohesive, more understanding of where everyone goes when this happens, both defensively and offensively. Um, and just like these guys, you know, I look at our recruiting classes for the next couple of years, and, and I'm thrilled. I know we can't report on it, but in every class, we've got a, a national team player coming in, and, and that's, that's a testament to the strength of the conference. Um, so while we're happy about that for the future, we've got to focus on one day at a time here with the current players and with the experience of our younger players that they had last year and then the talent of the freshman class this year, um, every game will get better, absolutely. And there was, there was so much buzz about Lynn Stadium opening and, and for really all coaches and for Bing for the first year in the ACC. And now for the first time in a long time, you're returning to the conference you played in the year before. How does that sort of calmness and familiarity help? Yeah, for sure it helps. And first and foremost, the conference has dubbed um, Lynn Stadium the Palace. So that's what everyone says. Are you playing at the Palace this year or are, you, are they coming to you? So I think that's pretty special that people call it the Palace. Um, this is interesting, but the, the excitement and the energy and, and the, of the first game that we played Ole Miss, uh, we were through the roof. We were elated. We weren't going to lose to anyone on that day for sure. But it's been interesting as last year's season went on, that feeling that we had opening the stadium on the first night, our opponents had as they came in. So 10th game, 11th game, 15th game in of the season, I don't want to truly admit this, but it kind of wore off a little bit for us, but it was super excited for our opponents. So we have to take more pride in playing in the palace and make sure that that, that excitement and adrenaline that the other teams are, are having because they're in here, that we at least match it and make sure that we, we, we claim our territory. Yeah, just first and foremost, I think that probably it's going to be a three-year cycle for women's soccer until we've played everyone home and we've played everyone away. Um, with that is really knowing the referees also. 
the type of facility that you play in and then the type of team that plays at home or plays away. We were fortunate to play Florida State away um, in front of four or 5,000 people. You know, So that's a really difficult environment to play in, but now we've been there, we've done it. We've never played at Carolina before, but Carolina's gonna come here and play. We've never played at Clemson yet, so that's gonna be the third year before that happens. So I think that this is, although it's valuable to have been in the conference, we still haven't seen a full cycle of the conference both home and away. So it'll be, uh, for the next two years, a work in progress for sure. You know, coaching's what we live for. So when we all end the previous spring in April at some point, your your brain switches to August 4th or August 9th or August 15th, whatever the day is for us to come in. So unfortunately, the NCAA doesn't let us coach them, but all we do is think about them until they report. Um, and you draw up different schemes and different systems, and you learn and you talk to different coaches, and, and those are incredibly exciting times for us but not more exciting than the first day your kids report. I honestly feel like a six-year-old at Christmas, the first day of preseason. I'm jittery, I'm nervous, I want to get all the compliance stuff done because I just want to get out on the field and start playing. So at the age I'm at, if that's the way I feel, I can assure you that that's the way our players feel. Um, again, six days in, they're probably walking like an old lady because they're sore and they're tired, but we have to embrace that because sport is all about adversity. And if we don't put them through adversity through preseason, what's gonna happen when we go down 1-0 and now it's adverse? And a person's true character shines in a moment of adversity. So we try to put them in adverse situations so we see how they'll respond. And then obviously from there, we make them better soccer team. Thank you. Thank you.